So today I'm going to take us through the exploration that I've been constructing on threads. This is part of my project for CS6460 uh, Educational Technology and my name is Tony Mason. My area of interest is in fact operating systems uh, and I've been trying to find ways of improving the educational process for operating systems. Uh, operating systems is a challenging area to teach even though there's quite a lot of material out there it generally seems to take the same technique which is the the, the sink or swim model. Uh, I'm not sure that I've achieved anything better than the sink or swim model but I'll give you a brief guided d d demo through it. So the previous exploration was about processes and we're going to tell the, the system that we have in fact already gone through that exploration. So it will let us come into this one. If we'd said no there, it would have instead told us, sorry, you need to go take the process exploration first. So the concept in this particular module is that of a thread within an operating system. And we're trying to explain to people about what threads are, how they're implemented, and how they might be used. Throughout the exploration, I have embedded links out to supplementary material. One of the goals here is by providing the supplementary material, we allow students to explore further if something isn't clear or if they're interested in more detail. Thus, the exploration itself can remain reasonably tractable, uh, tract tractable despite the fact that there is so much information available. So we'll continue past here. In this particular exploration, I've tried to improve on use of graphics from the previous exploration. One of the challenges in, in using graphics, however, is finding appropriate graphics or creating your own graphics. Because creating my own graphics is, of course, uh, time consuming. I've done quite a bit of that in the training that I've done in the past. I've used a little bit of that in, in the explorations here, but not a lot uh, because it's not necessarily suitable for the particular approach I'm taking here. And also because a fair amount of the work I've done has been for my employer and thus I can't, uh, can't just give it away. And I'm sure there's some way to fix it, but right now the only licensing that Opio will show is a Creative Commons license. So I've tried to use public materials as much as possible here. So in this we give examples of a case where you might want to have something about multiple things going on simultaneously. So we're giving a, an initial motivation for why we would have threads. And then Mirroring the question that I asked in the process uh, exploration, I asked, well, could we build an operating system without threads? Why do we need these things at all, in other words? And this is going to take us to a discussion of alternatives. Now, in all fairness, unlike processes where you can really do away with having multiple processes within a system, it's much more difficult to do away with having multiple threads. Still, people have done it, and we end up with things like event-driven systems. Uh, the observation that follows from this also is that we can have event-driven systems which provide some level of concurrency, but don't provide any parallelism. So there's a distinction between concurrency and parallelism. Then it says, do you want to know more, yes or no? In this case, I'm going to choose no. There's one extra card on, that, would, that would dive into that topic a little further. So this says, OK, great. Well, then we're just going to take you right to execution context. So we're going to keep you moving forward. In execution context, there's quite a lot here. So we have important things like registers. But an important example of a register that we save is the instruction pointer. And uh, then with a the stack, and again, you can see that I have links out to more clarifying uh, information. And one of the other things I really tried to do was to make sure that I picked a variety of different sources. I want students to understand that there's 
a wealth of information out there. So while I attempted to pick good sources, I didn't try to focus on using any one particular source. I also tried very hard not to show a particular bias to a specific operating system. In a class on operating systems concepts, it is important to make sure that students understand that pretty much all the operating systems end up implementing the same concepts. So here we have uh, clarification. We can talk about how Linux implements threads. Or we can talk about how Windows implements threads. So let's let's look at how Linux implements threads. So it starts talking about Linux and then points back to some historical information because some of the details of how Linux implements threads is tied up directly with the the, the history of, of Linux, how it started out as a single threaded system where processes only had one thread and then introduced multiple threads and how these are built on top of tasks. Uh, we have more information then it offers the opportunity to go say uh, well, what does Windows do? Uh, but it offers additional topics like what are p-threads? Well I didn't really describe what p-threads are in here so I didn't necessarily motivate that completely. So that one is more of a I'm giving a hint to the student but not necessarily uh, giving them enough context yet to know. So they may or may not be tempted to go look at that. That's alright. There will be several other places where we motivate them to look at p-threads in greater detail. Then we can talk about user threads or kernel threads. Talk about lightweight processes. So let's just simply walk and say, okay, tell us more about p-threads. p-threads is a standard. It was formalized uh, back in 1990. The uh, uh, p-threads isn't actually tied to Linux. This is one of those important things. And I want students to understand. So there are a couple of implementations of, of uh, pthreads on on top of Windows. So you can use the pthreads programming interface and still have code that's portable to Windows. So then we can go back and look at Windows threads or we can do kernel threads and user threads. So let's pop over to Windows threads just so we can see how that compares. So we have Windows threads and it describes context it has, talks about user mode stacks, talks about fibers, which are uh, sort of like threads on on Windows, much more like uh, lightweight processes are on, on a Linux system. So then we take people, uh, we can take them back to Linux, or we can look at new topics like what is a system call and what is a context switch. So let's pop over to what is a system call. So the system call section is a pretty long card and furthermore it really starts with a discussion of privilege level before it jumps into system call so the second card is in more more detail this is the most text heavy card there is in the entire presentation it might very well be better to break it up and turn it into multiple cards to try and make it a little more approachable. But for now, that's what I have. Talk about the way that we actually execute system calls, both on ARM and on 64-bit Intel. Again, the goal here is to not show a bias to a particular architecture, but really to try and focus on talking about the common architectures that we might find in the real world today. So then this takes us back to a higher level discussion, uh, which is really a uh, we'll point to system calls, which is where we came from. So you can see some of the looping nature of what we have here. But then it also talks about interrupts and processor faults. So these are all different ways that we can actually get into, uh, into the operating system. Well, now this will loop us back around to, to threads. Gee, we've been here before. So you can see there is a little bit of looping behavior here, and that will likely require further refinement. I did spend some time going through this to make sure you can always get out. It's actually easy when using this kind of layout to trap students into uh, a particular sequence of questions. So here I've, I've managed to find the, uh, the way out. I suppose in some ways it's a little maze-like. 
So maybe I've provided some of that gamification approach that I was discussing before. Of course, there needs to be some some goal or objective at the end, and right now the goal or objective at the end is just finishing the module. And maybe there will be some opportunity to provide greater feedback, uh, more positive reinforcement of, of achieving that goal. But for now, uh, we take ourselves into how do we actually implement this. In this case, I said, well, I really want to sort of spread out and show, gosh, threading really does occur in all sorts of different environments and programming languages, because it's really important. So in most of these cases, let's look at the Java case, for instance, it pops right into a video that talks about, uh, talks about threading. So uh, those are not my videos. There are other people's videos. I pulled what appeared to be good videos from um, a variety of sources, mostly YouTube, because Opia will autoplay YouTube videos, but will not allow me to embed auto to any other videos at all, unfortunately. So for example, if, if we go look at the, uh, uh, the Win32 discussion for threads, you can, um, I, all I can do is provide a link out to uh, a video. So let's go back to using threads here. Uh, this actually will allow me to loop back up to Linux threads and Windows threads as well. Uh, the reason that this is listed after the move on to the next subject is because I only recently made this change, and in order to move this line down to the bottom, I have to redo uh, basically all the last three things in in the list. So I have to re-implement them. So I decided not to do it at that at, uh, at the time. I might go back and do that as part of cleanup, or just leave it there and see if anybody actually comments on it. Maybe it doesn't really matter. So this is moving on to the next topic. Takes us to the end of the exploration. Uh, it specifically provides us with suggestions for the next two topics. One is synchronization, the other one is scheduling. Those are the explorations that I'll be working on in the coming weeks. But that is the end of this brief guided tour of my exploration on threads.